so shameless plug. Besides, I would tickets are on sale now. They are. Sh if you want to donate four hundred dollars, you get one ticket. Otherwise, they're only twenty bucks. It's on four twenty. That was completely by accident. But then when we picked the day, I was like, hell, that's a hell of an idea. <laughs> But after we already picked a date, was it? Oh, well, <laughs> all right, 420 it is. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go briefly over some common windows prevention techniques. These are all local. These are all assuming that you are a standard, non-admin, non-system user. Uh, so these are the ways I just, this is not in any specific order. These are just like a brain dump, shit that I've done, things that I've seen. Um, I might highlight some common ones, but, uh, and at the end, I'm going to kind of specifically go through, uh, unquoted service paths and just briefly touch on DLL hijacking because there's not a, a lot of difference there. Uh, so first one, local exploits, right? So you get a shell on a box. Uh, one of the first things, uh, I like to do is dump all the hot fixes. So you can figure out what's installed, and then you can go, you know, search exploit for what's not there, right? So if you just do, uh, and I gotta remember all these commands that I had. Oh shit! There's a Wemic command for it. Uh, there it is. Come on, come on, little buddy, come on. All right, so magically, if this command works, it should dump out the list of hotfixes that are installed and or not installed, however may be the case. Oh, there we go, right? So uh, it gives you the list of hotfixes installed. This is a Windows 7 system. So then, you know, you could use your magic, like, you know, I'm sure Cody has this stuff scored in the back of his memory where he's like, oh, dude, hotfix123 isn't installed. I got an exploit for that. Let me pull it out of my bag of tricks, right? So you can do that. That's one easy way to do it. Uh, you can look for... Um, any applications installed, right? So you could list services, uh, net, no wait, what's the service command? I did these earlier, so I didn't have to like fumble through it, but now I'm just gonna fumble through it. Oops. <sighs> all right, so you can list all the services that are installed, so then you can figure out what software's on there. Uh, one of my uh, favorite ones, uh, there's like a, there's a, Lotus Notes, an older version of the Notes client has this like uh, process monitor daemon that you can just load it and it loads it as a system user and then you just tell it to load command and it gives you a system command shell prompt. Uh, it may or may not be how I continue to get uh, admin access on my work laptop. Maybe. Maybe. But the best part is when you work red team, that's like expected of you. All right. So then quickly what you can do, so uh, exploit DB, if you have it on, um, oops, boo, if you have uh, the, the search point stuff uh, installed, you can do, uh, you can use search point to search exploit DB for exploits that are out there, so like the notes one. Notes diagnostic, right? So here's the notes diagnostics tool, and then you can read the little. Oops. Windows. Oops. All right, and then it tells you what you got to do, right? See, so all you got to do is like run this command that any user can run, and then you type load command and it gives you a freaking system command shell. It's awesome. Uh, other things you can do is search point. Windows local. So you can search for anything that has windows and local in it. Typically those are privesque vulnerabilities. Not all of them are. If this screen wasn't blown up to like blind man font, you'd, it'd look a little cooler. But anyway, so you can do stuff like that to find uh, exploits for local privilege escalation vulnerabilities, right? So that's, that's kind of step number one. Uh, Next one, so there's these two, uh, there's this, this concept of always install, install elevated. So 
somewhere some idiot thought it would be a great idea to let any user install anything as an elevated user, which means all you got to do is build an installer package and run it. And then whatever your output is, is done as an admin or a system user, right? So if you look for these two uh, reg keys, if their value is set to one, then it's enabled. And then all you got to do is build a build an installer. There's actually a power up module that, that creates the installer for you and installs it. So uh, I think it just adds a user. Uh, so that's another fun way. I don't see a lot of that, uh, but it's a fun one in there and whatever. Stored credentials, right? So um, if a system is set to auto log on a user, that, that password is stored in clear text in the registry. Um, files, you can do a find string command for any files that contain a particular string, right? So I'll look for things like passwords. A lot of times what you'll find are like temporary passwords or I found like passwords for Wi-Fi. This one doesn't always very fruitful for me. Uh, browser store is usually pretty fruitful, right? So this just sucks the the credentials out of like your, you know, Firefox uh, password store. Those are fine stuff. Uh, group policy preferences. So this one is probably uh, used to be the most common. I don't see it as much anymore. Microsoft released a half ass patch for it. Uh, so what this is, is AD uh, through GPO used to have the ability to set uh, a password for a local account. Uh, through group policy, uh, and then that password was encrypted, and then at some point Microsoft screwed up and they posted the private key on TechNet, and so then you could just decrypt the password with the private key. Uh, there's a PowerShell script called Git, git GP password uh, that will actually suck it out of uh, the sysfall share and then decrypt it for you and give you the clear text password. Uh, it, uh, a lot of times what this would amount to is uh, Teams would manage local administrator accounts with this, so it would be almost always a local admin password. Uh, and the best part was it was the same local admin password across all workstations. At that point, I've actually seen uh, some environments uh, where this was a domain admin. So instead of like setting a local admin password, because that's hard, they just use this as domain admin account. So it was actually domain admin in, in GPP. Uh, login scripts. This is a fun one. Uh, so. Uh, I've seen in cases, so and, and these are all can be pulled by a regular user. So if you can pull these, once you have access to a local box, you can pull uh, sysvol um, and look for login scripts. Uh, I've seen instances where there'll be checks in login scripts for specific software uh, that should be installed on a workstation. And if it's not installed, they happily provide the username and password of an administrator of some level, uh, sometimes a DA, uh, to install that software for you. Uh, and that's always a fun one. So I've seen that before. The last two, uh, unquoted service path. Uh, these are, I see unquoted service paths frequently, but it's infrequent where you can actually uh, leverage it. And I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. But And then DL hijacking is kind of the same way. You see a ton of that, uh, but it's not always in a place that you can leverage it, but uh, it's at least something good to look at. So uh, just... We'll dive into the unquoted service paths and DLL hijacking, right? So the fuck uh, service uh, installed on the Windows meets one of the following criteria, or meets uh, excuse me, all of the following cri criteria. The, the path, the meaning the path where the executable, the service executable is installed, has to have a space in it somewhere, right? C program space files, uh, for example, right? Uh, and and then the second thing is that path when the service is created has to not be quoted, right? Meaning it doesn't have it doesn't have quotes around it. So here's the example, C program files blah in quotes versus C program files blah with no quotes. Has to be installed in a location where the user has write access somewhere in that path uh, and particularly in the path where there's a space, right? So uh, program files is protected, so we can't typically write there unless somebody did something stupid and gave us access to do so. Uh, so a lot of times you'll see services installed in program files uh, usually it's not something you can leverage unless uh, maybe further down in the path there's another space and you have access there right and the last thing is user has the ability to restart the service reboot the box or can just wait uh, so obviously uh, what we're doing is we're overriding the service executable and then we have to restart the service to get it to 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 uh, run uh, so the easiest way to do that is is to uh, restart just straight up restart the service, but you can only do that as an admin typically, unless this is coupled with like insecure uh, service permissions and they let uh, the user restart the service, uncommon again. 
Uh, again, you can reboot the box, or like I said, you can just wait for the user to reboot the box. I typically don't. I don't like to reboot the box because it's noisy, right? Uh, people might see their box get shut down in front of them while they're typing on it. Mm. Maybe, yeah, right? <coughs> Why does it work? Uh, so, uh, Windows search order is dumb. Enough said. Uh, so, take, a, take, for example, the path that's lifted up there. Uh, C, program, space files, Microsoft, Bing, space bar, 7.1, BB, service.exe, right? When the service is started, it calls that exe. So when when my when when it's unquoted, and I have like an error because I put quotes in here, but if those quotes weren't there, imagine they aren't there. <coughs> when it tries to start the pass, the f it stops every time it sees a space and tries to run that as the executable. Right, great idea, Windows, you dumbass. <laughs> so for example, the first try, it will go to C program. It will append a .exe to it and try and run it. If it's not there, then it will move to files, uh, files Microsoft, and then it will see Bing with a space, and if it if uh, and then it will try an .exe there, and then it will uh, if it's not there, it will skip on to the next one, and eventually, it will get to bbbservice.exe, right? So now I think everybody can kind of understand where the where everything comes into play, right? So if I can write to to C and write a, f a program.exe, or if I can write bing.exe, it will execute that before it ever gets to the service. <coughs> so that's kind of the gist of it. Just briefly on um, uh, DLLs, it's kind of the same uh, sort of thing, right? So in this case, this is an executable that loads a DLL, the DLL is missing, and because Windows search order is weird, uh, it's definitely more complex um, in uh, DLL hijacking. This is the search order that goes through, right? So then there's two ways. So there's with safe DLL search mode enabled, and the key is uh, bullet number five, the current directory. Uh, that's where it looks, right? So it looks in all these like very specific directories, and then if it if it doesn't get there, it says, "Oh, how about the current directory? Let's just try that." Right? Uh, without search uh, safe search order enabled, it's actually the second directory. Uh, so uh, when this is disabled, it's usually easier to trigger. Like I said, this one you see a lot of it, but it's it's sometimes it's hard to leverage. But again, it's all it's all a uh, pathing problem, right? So now, how do we find them? So we look, right? You can physically look at the service, and it will have a quotes in it. If it's quoted, it won't have quotes in it if it's not quoted. That's a little tedious. Uh, there is a tool called PowerUp, which is a PowerShell uh, tool that has a s that has a command called get service unquote, which will list out all the services that don't have quotes in them for you. It really um, narrows it down. Then you can use the uh, ICA CLS command to look for uh, permissions on the folders to make sure that you have uh, write access. Uh, and then for DLL hijacking, you can use Procmon, uh, and I'll show you a couple filters in Procmon for uh, looking for missing DLLs. All right, so let's go over the Windows box again, because we like zooming. So if I do um, get, I have power, sh uh, power uploaded. Service unquoted. It should. God, this. Why is this so slow? All right. So there, it'll list off. I've actually got a couple of programs on here that don't have quoted service path. Um, I'll scroll up. So the one that we're going to actually target, uh, th which this is kind of a dead giveaway, right? So like I mentioned, program files is usually protected. Uh, so here we actually see this abyss web server, and all I did was went out on. Uh, exploit DB and look for um, a known crappy application. Uh, and typically, whenever I find a known crappy application, it's one I've never heard of in my life. Like, who really wa runs this as a web server? <coughs> I know why. So, uh, so anyway, you can see uh, that the path is C abyss space web space server, and then the uh, abyss ws.exe service. Right. So, based off of what we learned the other time. The way we would exploit this is that we would just create a file, assuming we can write in uh, C uh, <laughs> in the root. Uh, we just create abyss.exe, and that should be the first thing uh, that it tries to run, right? So then we can be like all boring, and then we can do oh, too far, too far. So 
So then we can look at the permissions for that directory. Uh, so basically what you're seeing here is uh, the group and then the permissions associated with it. And F, I don't know all of them because why? Uh, F means full. Uh, so obviously you can look at built-in administrators has full access to that directory. And then the one I'm concerned about is built-in users because I'm just a standard user. And I suppose I should prove that to you. So I'm not an administrator. My username is victim, uh, right? <coughs> so I'm in the built-in users group. So I have uh, at, at the end, uh, read, execute, and write permissions to C. So before I go any further there, let me show you Procmon. So I had Procmon running over here because like I maybe apparently in my mind anticipated that things would go slow. So what you want to do when you're looking for uh, DLLs is these three filters that are in green at the top. And let me hang on. God damn it. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so the first, these three on the top, right? So process name ends with exe, right? Because it's going to be um, a service that kicks it off. The result is name not found. And the path ends in .dll. All right, so if I apply that filter, then this will come up. The other thing I always throw in here is user because obviously it doesn't do me any good to try and privilege escalate to the user that I already am. So in this case, uh, I would look for anything that's uh, NT authority system or potentially an administrator, but it's probably a system, right? So you'll see the executable on the left, you'll see the user that runs it, and then on the right over here is the DLL. And then if we scroll over a little more, it'll say name not found, meaning that that particular um, DLL is not found. So then we just have to create a malicious DLL, just like we do with uh, unquoted service path, if we can put it in that path, then it will try and load that DLL to do whatever fun stuff we want, right? I don't think I have anything on here. Um, one of the ones that I found, and I think they fixed it, was BG Info, that, that stupid little sys internals tool that puts the bull crap in your, back in your uh, wallpaper so that y you know what system you logged into, because apparently you were not smart enough to log into the right system the first time. And Anyway, that one had a, a, a DLL in it, right? So now that we've got this, let me get back to that. Let's see what else was I going to show you? All right. Oh, so now all we got to do is create a service executable. Thankfully, we have Kali. Uh, we have Metasploit anyway. So I think PowerUp uh, PowerUp has a module that, um, and it actually shows you in the. Um, So it actually shows you there's this write service binary. So this is the abuse function that's built into PowerUp. Uh, I've had, uh, I've tried this several times and it doesn't work. And I've tried it sometimes and it does work. So I just default to write in my own. I don't know uh, what's wrong with it. I don't know if it's just when I tried it, it didn't work for whatever reason. But so if you have PowerUp to get service unquoted, uh, this is the command to just abuse it. And it's, you know, so it'd be a lot faster than having to copy things around. But uh, anyway, uh, just just for your own sake, right? So all you got to do over here, and this is pretty straightforward. I just use MSF Venom, and in this case, uh, I used a payload of Windows Add User, right? Give it the username, the password, uh, and then the the format of uh, exe service. Uh, so that so it's not a straight up, it's a not a straight up executable. It's actually service executable, and then you just outwrite it to the name of the file that you want. You know, that runs, you get some fun. And then if you go over here, again, oh, I can just do it here. So I have this, this is the file that I created on the other workstation earlier today on the Kali box. So all I got to do now, if I do, so here's my abyss web server directory where the service is actually installed. Uh, so all I got to do is put that abyss.exe in there because it'll try and hit it first because Windows is dumb. Oh, 
Oops. What didn't it do? Oh, I know why. Should have worked that. Must be. That's fine. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm moving it to myself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I do all day long. There we go. No, 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 it's there. Right, so now I have it there. The search order should start. So all you have to do is, like I mentioned earlier, be patient or um, or restart the service. I actually have a, an admin shell over here for a different user. <laughs> so you just stop. So uh, one thing is when I stop and start the service, when I start the service again, it's going to run this uh, abyss.exe, and then it's going to fail to actually start the service. It's going to run what I want it to run, but it's going to fail to start the service because, uh, well, I mean, it's a, you know, it's not an actual web server. Uh, so you have to, I if you're going to do it, you can you could backdoor an actual service executable. So you could probably suck down the the abyss web server, backdoor it, and then upload it so that the service would run after the fact. That's a lot of extra work. Uh, so what you could do in this case is just do it twice, right? So uh, run the run the script you want it to run, delete it. Now you have admin rights. Um, you can delete the, the executable that you created, and then you can restart the service so that it actually starts up properly. Yeah, you probably could write it to, to, ki to delete itself and then restart itself when it's done. But you have to, that, yeah. There you go. New talk, right? So it should have run uh, the executable that I created. So if I do, now oh God, zooming. Oh, 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 low buddy. That's too much. So if I do net user, I should see I now have user backdoor. Net local group administrators, and now I should be part of the backdoor. Uh, backdoor, the user that I just created is now part of the, the group. That's it. That's how you abuse unquoted service paths. Uh, the other thing I'll show you quick, just when I said you could just look for it. So if you look at So if you actually just go in here and look at the properties of the service, right? So in this case where it says path execute, it's not quoted. Like I mentioned, if you bring up another one, I'm gonna have to like randomly pick one that, oh, it's not just a baseline. Uh, anyway, if, if you find one that ha that's in a, in a directory of the space, it'll just have quotes around it inside the services window. Uh, so you can see it. Any questions? Okay, that's it.